the U.S. could be defenseless against Chinese hypersonic weapons. Another Canadian is sentenced to death. And spies are everywhere. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. China's hypersonic weapons are posing a serious threat to the United States. That's according to a meeting this week of the American Foreign Policy Council. China's hypersonic missiles will be capable of delivering conventional and nuclear warheads anywhere on the globe with a flight time measured in mere minutes. Good. I hate waiting for anything. Hypersonic weapons, according to a professor of aerospace engineering at Michigan University, are rocket boosted to high altitude and may be launched from land, sea, or air. They fly far faster than any other weapons, more than 3,000 miles per hour and potentially up to 10,000 miles per hour, which makes them difficult to identify, avoid, or shoot down. And that might mean they could get through U.S. defense systems. According to one of the speakers at the American Foreign Policy Council, these newly developed hypersonic missiles can potentially penetrate U.S. ballistic missile defenses and possibly target and destroy early warning radars and or aircraft carriers in the event of a future conflict. This is a big problem, not just for America, but for Taiwan. Not that Taiwan needed more problems. A senior defense official told reporters at the Pentagon earlier this year that as China's hypersonic weapons technology improves, it might make Beijing more willing to take risks it wouldn't have before. They are getting to a point where the PLA leadership may actually tell Xi Jinping that they are confident in their abilities. And I would just like to remind any of the PLA leadership watching that I've always been a big fan of Xi Jinping. Ask anyone. Back me up on this one, guys. You might remember that the Chinese Communist Party has been a little upset with the Canadian government since last December. That's when Meng Wanzhou, the CFO of Huawei, was arrested in Canada. The U.S. had requested Canadian authorities arrest and extradite her because she suspected of violating U.S. sanctions on Iran. And even though China asked Canada very nicely to ignore the rule of law and let Meng go, that has not happened yet. And now, a second Canadian has been sentenced to death in China. This Canadian was allegedly dealing drugs in China, just like the first one sentenced to death earlier this year. What a coincidence. These drug-dealing Canadians, eh? I should know. I'm addicted to maple syrup. Anyway, Canada is saying the Chinese Communist Party is arbitrarily applying the death sentence, to which they replied, Canada totally has double standards. Which, considering Canada abolished the death penalty in the 1970s, I'm not quite sure what they mean. In addition to the two Canadians sentenced to death, two other Canadian citizens, former diplomat Michael Kovrig and businessman Michael Spaver, are also being held by China and face accusations of harming national security. And if they're watching the news, I'm sure they're very worried right now. I'm just kidding. They don't show that kind of news inside China. A former CIA agent, who allegedly conspired with the Chinese Communist Party, is expected to plead guilty. He's being charged with trying to give secret information to China. But for some background, this was happening at the same time as the CIA's network inside China was being exposed. Agents were arrested or killed. So I don't imagine the CIA is too happy with the guy. And the CIA are not the friendliest of people under the best of circumstances. Though to be clear, Li was not charged with being the mole who brought down the CIA network in China. The cause of that is still unknown, though Li is a suspect. Speaking of the CIA, spies! Spies everywhere! That's the message Chinese authorities have for the good people of Beijing. And a new directive has asked the public to get involved in rooting them out. Because asking the public to root out spies definitely won't result in baseless accusations. It's not like there's a history of that kind of thing in communist China. Let me spin you a little yarn about the ongoing U.S.-China trade talks. The U.S. might be putting duties of up to 460% on Chinese yarn. Okay, I mainly wanted to make that pun. Look, I spend all my days researching incredibly depressing things. Just give this to me. Three Chinese banks may have violated U.S. sanctions on North Korea, and a U.S. judge wants their records. The three banks are accused of funneling over $100 million into North Korea. China is one of North Korea's only real allies. 
Well, China and Russia. Okay, China, Russia, and Dennis Rodman. And they're the only thing keeping the economy afloat. Like a healthy layer of fat keeps the dear leader afloat in a tub of water. The Chinese Communist Party has been really trampling on Hong Kong's freedom. And Taiwan is calling out the Hong Kong government for going along with it. Hong Kong denied entry to 68 Taiwanese Falun Gong practitioners who wanted to join a parade being held in the city to expose the persecution of Falun Gong in mainland China. Such delicious irony. If I didn't know better, I would say the Chinese Communist Party isn't honoring the one country, two systems policy. I don't want to jump to any conclusions though, that really wouldn't be fair. And I'm afraid I have some bad news. It's going to be harder for all of us to bring home the bacon. The price of pork is expected to jump because of the ongoing swine flu in China. One industry expert told CNBC, if I really like bacon, I'd be kind of stocking up. Um, excuse me, I, I have to go.